It's me. The answer to the question, what if Harry Potter and Ron Weasley fucked? <laughs> yeah, I get quite a few lookalikes. I'm told I look like quite a lot of people. Anyone in the room got any get told they look like a celebrity or anything? Anyone at all? I don't believe you. No one's had the abuse shouted at them. Well, I'll tell you a couple of mine. I used to be quite fat in school. And the combination of being ginger, fat, and glasses meant people would call me Elton John. <laughs> but this was the time when Elton John's Are You Ready For Love was the advert for Premier League on Sky Sports. So kids used to follow me around school saying, Are you ready? Are you ready for love? But I was a 14-year-old fat autistic kid. I was not ready for fucking love, you know? <laughs> I barely had the confidence to ask my best friend if he'd be my other half on Bebo, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who else did I get? Um, oh, I had a woman come up and tell me I looked like one of the proclaimers. <laughs> Just one of them, Ken, really. Which one and how can you fucking tell, you know? <laughs> who else have I got? Oh, I had a lassie very sincerely and seriously come up to me in a club and asked me if I was Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I said, first of all, I don't look like Ed Sheeran. And secondly, what do you think Ed Sheeran's doing in the garage on a Tuesday night? <laughs> right, so what we're here for is to, well, we're all pretending we're here because it's Silas's birthday. <laughs> When I know for a fact that you're all here because it is, in fact, my 100th comedy show today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still in the fucking fun this <laughs> I'll, get, I'll, I'll give you the insight into what tonight's going to be. So a lot of the comedians are going to come up and roll Silas because that's our version of birthday bumps, you know. Um, what can I say about Silas? Silas is Romanian. <laughs> That's Sorry. not the most, you racist. <laughs> he's Romanian. He spent a lot of his life as a Jehovah's Witness, which means Hitler would fucking hate him, you know? <laughs> but as an autistic former Jehovah's Witness myself, I would have been on the train with you, Silas. <laughs> Having a fucking brilliant time because we autistics love a train, you know? <laughs> yes. A wee confirmation from another autistic in the crowd. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to roast you too much, Silas, because, you know, you're going to get that from every other comedian tonight. So what I'm going to do is just bring on the first act, and to make it fair, I'm going to roast him a bit as well. <laughs> well, what can I say about him? But apart from, he is the answer to the question, what would Jackie Chan look like after a bad shellfish allergic reaction? <laughs> He's very much answered the question, can you cure Down syndrome? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Samuel! <laughs> Thank you, Peter. That was nice. Um, I, I'm just going to crack straight into it. Uh, so Silas is quite a fluffy guy. <laughs> Looks like something I've picked out my belly button. <laughs> uh, Silas is a stand-up comedian and failed actor. <laughs> uh, his looks have helped him get modelling jobs as well. <laughs> for warming packets, and, uh, for warming pictures and cigarette packets. <laughs> Uh, Silas's acting career hasn't been lucrative, didn't get too many parts, you know, to make ends meet. He once registered for a website called the Toy Boy Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> he was supposed to meet up and have sex with a gran for money. <laughs> I think it's very fitting that he registered to have sex with someone going through menopause when his parts dried up. <laughs> uh, as a former Jehovah's Witness, Christmas was a very strange time for Silas. The first time he saw an advent calendar, he chapped in every door. <laughs> The 
Silas is first night in the UK. He stole a shopping trolley because he heard that there was a pound coin inside of it. <laughs> I think that Silas is a lot like a shopping trolley because he also looks like he's been dredged from the bottom of a canal. <laughs> Silas used to share bunk beds with his dad until 18. <laughs> Coincidentally, he also lost his virginity at age 18 <laughs> when he moved into a double bed. <laughs> <laughs> in the bunk beds, uh, Silas was on the bottom, but in the double beds, his dad was a bottom. <laughs> uh, Silas used to live in Windsor. A uh, big history with the royal family. Silas's family is a lot like the royal family. You know, one of them isn't a good driver. <laughs> you wouldn't trust his uncle to babysit. <laughs> and the entire family will disown you if you get into a relationship with anyone, even remotely black. <laughs> Thank you, <sir. laughs> uh, I've got one more roast and it's for this person here. <laughs> um, Dean uh, has a, a horror podcast. Dean's a big fan of horror films. Favorite um, favorite killer from a horror film is why did you say fuck? No, uh, who's the killer again? I've forgotten. Michael Myers. Dean's favorite killer from uh, from horror is Michael Myers. But as a gay man. If Dean wanted to kill as many people as Michael Myers, he could simply, you know, donate blood. <laughs> oh, I enjoyed that a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> Obviously, it's been talked about a lot about um, you being a Jehovah's Witness already, but you weren't really, were you? You were in a sect of Jehovah's Witness because that's how hipster Silas is that Jehovah's Witnesses are too mainstream for him, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it explains the trends of choice, that's what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> right, what can I say about the next guy? The next guy claims to be autistic, right? <laughs> but he also believes in ghosts, so. I don't know if anyone from the show rules in, but you need to take his benefits off and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Dean came out to his parents as a teenager. I don't know why he bothered, to be honest with you. <laughs> the only way he could surprise his parents if he came out as straight, you know? <laughs> Gave his dad a heart attack, God rest his soul, you know? Fuck you! <laughs> his dad didn't kill him, right? His dad's dead, I should say that. Anyways, <laughs> He wasn't your real dad, it's fine. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, a very good friend of mine, Dean T. Burns! Thank you very much, how are we doing? Now I'm going to do a little bit of material just to warm up from that. I'm uh, celebrating something today, not just Silas's birthday. I've recently gotten over my addiction. Woo! To salted caramel. <laughs> I moved on to bigger and better things since. Like just yesterday, I was in Kyle's kitchen, hunched over with a spoon like that, scranning a jar of Biscoff spread. <laughs> that wasn't worth it, fuck it. <laughs> but now uh, we're going to go into the main man right here, Mr. Silas Sabox. I hope I'm saying your name right there, mate. Is that right? Close enough. Close enough. How, yeah. how do you pronounce it, Ashley? Subway. Did anyone else get that? Or like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, Silas is a fucking beautiful guy. What can I say about him? You know, he's so tough during COVID. Silas faced the challenge head on. There was nothing new to him since he spends his daylight hours coughing. <laughs> that was fucking shite. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, Silas man somehow manages to look both homeless and rich at the same time. <laughs> You know, anytime I see him, I don't know whether he's going to ask me for spare change or ask where the nearest Waitrose is. <laughs> but uh, what I quite respect about Silas is that he likes to go against Romani stereotypes in his comedy, which I think is to be very respected. Like, I once asked him where he saw himself in five years, and he replied, Sorry, mate, I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> 
He's a very handsome boy, you know, he looks like every Disney Channel heartthrob after they've gone through a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I love you too much, really, man. You know, outside of comedy, Silas also does work as an actor. You might recognise him from the streets of Glasgow, where he frequently tries to convince people that he's an actor. <laughs> Uh, he's quite proud of his fitness as well. He cycles and he goes to the gym just in case he has to outrun the border control officers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Silas's show, which I had the pleasure of seeing, was called They Said There Would Be Jobs. And you know, Silas is himself is always at job interviews, always hustling. But when they say dress for the job you want, I didn't realise that they meant paedophilic karaoke singer. And I mean, <laughs> Uh, what else have I got here? Fuck. I think I, I think that's all I've got. Fuck it. See you later. Thank you, Father Levan. Yes, let's see. You. I'm looking through my list of roasts and stuff. I know who it is. Don't worry. Yeah. So you know, I was talking about Dean coming out earlier. You know, people that don't come out or don't feel they're ready to come out, they're described as in the closet. What's the term for when someone isn't willing to accept they're autistic? Because <laughs> Charlie did say earlier he doesn't want to get tested for it because he doesn't want to prove his mum correct. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a man that looks like every character from the Beano. Charlie <laughs> Yes, my name is Charlie Wallace and I confuse people with a very Scottish name, an annoyingly English accent. People tell me I look like Jack Black and I sound like he ate Jules Holland. <laughs> a previous row, someone told me I look like Tenacious D Cup. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the level to be, gents. Uh, yeah, I thought having an English accent in Scotland might be an issue, but the last gig I did, someone told me to fuck off back to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I was up my rows with myself, I, you got a dress, what well, you look like when you're an act, like I have a lot of hair because there's a comb over that's got to go in three different directions. It's already covering up two patches of hair loss going like this. If you go back in two places, you know what that's called? It's called a widow's peak. I hate that name. Widow's peak to me sounds like a power setting on a dildo. <laughs> widow's peak setting, for those of you who want to forget you even had a husband. <laughs> Uh, that's a line now, actually, it's going back in three places. I developed a random bowl patch on the side of my head, exactly where it looks weird. And now it's called alopecia. A bit more exotic now. Alopecia's a stripper from the Midwest. <laughs> she doesn't fuck around with those pigs. She goes straight through with those pigs, straight through jackhammer, straight through an uh, overloaded washing machines, all the way to Michael J. Fox whisking eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that in anticipation of Michael J. Fox being here. <laughs> uh, apparently, he didn't care enough. So there we go. Um, so yeah, he just shook his hand and said no. Sort of, yeah. Um, uh, well, I'm going to move on to the roasting because I think I've had enough. Uh, I actually, uh, confession, I didn't know I'd be able to be on this show, so I had to write all of this very fucking last minute. Uh, the round of applause for Paddy Lit and his arranged the show. <laughs> Paddy Lit, a man with the facial hair of a TV Victorian and the skin of an actual Victorian. <laughs> Um, Dean Byrne, who's where there, you've just, just seen him. Everyone knows Dean by his original stage name, the Fuck Glasgow you. Cunt. <laughs> it was heard, and this is true, to list Jimmy Longmuir as an early influence. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fucking wank. <laughs> That's pretty weak, mate. Come on, you've got to write better than that. Um, <laughs> this is the last time I give you a blowjob. <laughs> you wish. Anyway, um, <laughs> Dean's hair makes him look like if Dr. Bounty Hunter hadn't worn a condom during that stag do in Bangkok. <laughs> <laughs> he is adopted, so who knows? Um, <laughs> Right, on to the meat and potatoes. Silas, Silas, you fucking Wi-Fi password. <laughs> I've, never, I've never cared enough to learn your name properly because so I've just settled on Silas Shabby Witch. <laughs> you fucking untidy looking hag. Um, 
it's going to really spin. Now, Silas is Romanian. I don't actually know of English. It's his first language. From the way he speaks, I'm guessing one of his teachers was Tim Westwood. <laughs> He might also have passed on some relationship advice. <laughs> <laughs> some people follow me. Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> Silas, not every thought has to become a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you have more podcasts than listeners. <laughs> a ratio even I can beat. I have zero podcasts, zero listeners. I'm better at podcasts. The new <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I'll leave you on this one. Uh, Silas is remarkable. He's the only person more in love with Laura Quingo than Laura Quingo. <laughs> from a young man called Daniel Petrie. Right. Whoa, yay. So he said, uh, he said this, he said, Silas is from Transylvania. Transylvania is famous for vampires, of course. They get on people's necks and suck blood. Silas isn't a vampire, so instead he gets on stage and sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the first half. I think Silas is going to go and get another ice bath. <laughs> I think Dean needs one as well after that fucking chimney <laughs> one. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to take a 10 minute break, go get a drink, go have five, go for a piss, do what you want, I know your dad, have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so obviously Lawson it can be quite a quite a harsh thing, but I think if you're a Glaswegian man, I know shit indeed. If you're a Glaswegian man you know you're kinda of used to it, you get roasted all the time, you know. Like my pals, for example. I asked my mate to describe me once. Don't know why I did that, because as anyone in this room will tell you, a compliment was not forthcoming. <laughs> what he said was, He looks like he said, Peter, you look like if someone described Richard Ayoade to a blind person, they then tried to draw him, but the first person neglected to mention he was black. That's it. <laughs> and I'd love to argue with that, but I do look like that, and I also work in IT, so it doesn't really help, to be honest with you. Um, what am I going to say next? Yeah, okay, I'll just bring on the next person, that's what I'll do. Yeah, so, he's wearing a wrestling and Greg's the Baker crossover t-shirt. <laughs> Which is reassuring for me, because it's nice to know that I'm not the biggest virgin in the fucking room. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome this day, Stephen Roach! Hey! That obvious, wasn't it? <laughs> so uh, this is a bit weird, because um, when Paddy called me in the night, saying, hey, do you fancy doing uh, things in night? Uh, we're doing a roast. I said, my oh, bro, I've had my whole ages. <laughs> I said, no, I can't roast, fucking stupid bastard. We're, we're roasting Silas. I was like, who's Silas? <laughs> I said, comedian. I said, Paddy, I'm not roasting somebody I, I, I don't know. I said, it'll be easy, he's foreign. <laughs> <laughs> he also wears red trousers, so I'm presuming he shops at the clown store. <laughs> Says the fucker when the fucking wrestling t-shirt was nearly 40 for fuck's sake. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> um, he's also from uh, Romania, where, which is the home of vampires. People that I, I can actually relate to a lot, they suck, uh, suck out people's blood. Whenever I do uh, stand up in a room, I just suck out the energy from the room. <laughs> Um, we've also got Charlie in the, in the room. Charlie, the only Englishman that's ever moved to Scotland, but get racial abuse for every other nationality. <laughs> Dean, Hi. you've taken it tight tonight, well done. 
<laughs> you look like every professional wrestler from the 80s that's died that rolled together. <laughs> Sean, I'm not saying anything about you, you do M MMA, no, you'll not fuck it. <laughs> I'm not saying anything about, about you either, you're Jesus and I, I want to climb on to what hope I've got, but I'm still getting into heaven. <laughs> I want to talk about um, Scottish people doing rap. <laughs> Stop fucking doing it. <laughs> Honestly, if, if there's one thing uh, Scottish people should not do, it's fucking rap. But barely understood just speaking. <laughs> yeah, on my Instagram right now, all I can see is we Spice Boy Tadgers trying to be the next Kindle Lamar going, I'm the big dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fuck. <Is> that... <laughs> I'm still getting over with being called a virgin. I'm the big I'm the big dog that my crew behind me, I'm gonna shake your more. Fuck off! In that shit right now, you don't see fucking black teenagers in Brooklyn trying to be a uh, Louis Capaldi, do you? Because they're the cool ones, we're the fucking lame ones. Stick to what we know, depressing acoustics and the fucking house music. <laughs> We've also got the Women's World Cup on just now. You hear a lot of fucking about... Ah, you know, that deserves applause, actually. <laughs> you can hear the fucking hundreds of old cunts moaning about it. Because they're, they're all moaning, right, that there's no football on just now. And you say, well, there's a women's World Cup, they go, nah, 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 It's like, it's like, women belong in the fucking kitchen. It's like, what's the problem? It's women playing football. It's a two for one deal, you fucking idiots. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, it's not just... It's not just women in general, it's young, attractive, fit women. <laughs> You're based on heaven, football and women. In fact, I'm getting harder just thinking about it. I, really <laughs> uh, I do a podcast part-time, part and yes, it's about wrestling. It's called The Daft Sheet via Wrestling Daft. If you can follow it on Spotify uh, or Apple or whatever fucking thing, um, I'd appreciate a follow. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I should clarify, but calling you a virgin, that was bang out of order, especially no, coming for me, you know, like, my best experience with women was getting 40 points for the word sex in a game of Scrabble, you know, <laughs> it's not good, man, I'm going to be the first person to get an STI through Immaculate Conception, you know? <laughs> I decided I'll just roast myself for this, but I don't know that. No, I mean, like, in school, I was, I was very shy and awkward. I was so shy and awkward in my, in my school yearbook, under most likely two of my classmates wrote, shoot up a cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'd love to argue with, I would, but I look like every guy in every American teen drama that one day decides enough's enough, don't I? <laughs> what have you brought for show and tell? A gun, that's what. <laughs> uh, who's next? Oh, hey! <laughs> So Pierce, Pierce is up next, and Pierce is part of a comedy sketch duo called Jamaica Street. Uh, neither of them live on Jamaica Street, which is a bit weird, isn't it? You know, that'd be a bit like coming from Renfrew and calling yourself a Glasgow kid. <laughs> I was supposed to roast Pierce there, and I've just given Dean a needless man. What can I say about Pierce? He's got a massive arse. <laughs> yes! Go on, uh, go Kim, on. Kim, go on. Kim, Kim, Kim Kardashian's arse broke the internet. Pierce's has broke several chairs. <laughs> and suffocated two chihuahuas. So. <laughs> uh, Dean, a big fan of dog abuse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Pierce Higgins! Thank you, thank you. Everyone get up for your host, Peter! <laughs> Peter is autistic. Uh, <laughs> he is so frigid, it's as if a faulty Lego figure wished it was alive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he's autistic. Lego figures are the things you play with, not the things you eat, Peter. <laughs> 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 Paddy Lynn, one of my pals. He looks like if Wolverine superpower was smoking crack. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Samuel, another bit, well, they're all my pals, but Kyle Samuel, a good friend, because I'd just like to tell you no amount of tattoos can stop the gay man trying to escape your skin. <laughs> Dean Byrne, another autistic friend. 
The only thing harder than eye contact for Dean is trying to wear clothes that aren't pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Pringle, he thought my name was Pete, and I thought Jesus had came back to life and raided the bin behind a super drive. <laughs> What does alopecia and Asperger's have in common? Charlie Mullins! <laughs> Sean Chalmers, one of my best pals. I've known him for a short time, but I feel like I've known, found out quite a lot about Sean this past year. Like, his two biggest idols in the world are Frankie Boyle and Tyler Swings. <laughs> Suicide joke. Yeah. <laughs> now, on to the main event. Ooh. Silas, you beautiful man. Silas looks like if Abercrombie and Fitch done a homeless catalogue. <laughs> <laughs> Silas is an actor from Transylvania, but like his vampire ancestors, he also doesn't appear very well on camera. <laughs> Tonight, Silas came here right after doing an ice bath, setting a world record for the first Romanian to ever take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> but to his credit, Silas is a great comedian. And when he's not handing out killer punchlines, he's handing out the big issue. <laughs> Just like to say one thing, but known Silas a wee while, he's one of the only guys that every time I see him genuinely asks me how I'm doing. So happy birthday, big man. Thank you very much for getting the back backstage. I don't care how you're doing. <laughs> Now, what can I say about the next guy? Uh, so, Ian's crippled. Uh, you might have lost. He's not actually, don't worry. And I'm mentally crippled, I can say that word, it's fine. Um, I, was out on, I was out on Saturday with Ian, uh, drinking, as you'll guess from this next part of the sentence. And uh, he texted me from outside the pub in third person. <laughs> <laughs> He said that I quote, sorry man, I just met Ian. Can you come out the pub? <laughs> I found myself. <laughs> you look like the kind of guy that would find themselves to be honest. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, you might need a bit of time, but please give me Ian Pringle! Crutches, I just fell off Pete's mum. <laughs> Sorry, Pierce. <laughs> she was a super drive. <laughs> <laughs> we got Elsa and Kyle Samuels here, he's really creative with that hairline. <laughs> T.T. Burns is right, with that, hair, with that gut and hair there, we call him Bulk Hogan. <laughs> or uh, John Wayne Gacy. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Chalmers to his right. <laughs> Sean Chalmers, if you want to know what happens, if you, if you listen to every single episode of the Joe Rogan Experience. <laughs> <laughs> You're very attractive. What are you doing with Andrew Tate <laughs> That's for Angela. <laughs> and then we've got the, the guy that brought us all together, Paddy Linton. Ooh, yeah. Paddy's late father spent a lot of time in the jail. And his mum is also a massive slut. <laughs> <laughs> Since your dad was in jail, who was having more sex, your mum or your dad? <laughs> he used to call Paddy's dad solitary after everyone had done their time in the hole. <laughs> Paddy's got quite bad psoriasis. So if anyone thinks, you know, if anyone's been at the toilet and seen a load of like flaky shit everywhere and thought we'd been doing loads of coke, that's just Paddy's skin. <laughs> <laughs> a pizza.
pizza chef with a pizza face. Which is one of the reasons he often thinks about topping himself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. should I do some stand up or just kind of no, roast? Just roast? Just roast, uh, just roast right? Silas is Romanian, <laughs> which is by far the dodgiest of the Eames. <laughs> <laughs> He's a gypsy Jehovah's Witness. Two groups of people so annoying they make you think Hitler might have had a point. <laughs> Makes sense that you became an actor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know why. You seem like a nice guy, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, fucking enjoy the rest of your night, Aberdeen Brown. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Christ, he's been in a bad mood since that Tris Affection, hasn't he? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Thousand years ago, get over it. It's not even Jewish. Anyway, like, uh, we're going to go for another break, guys, and then uh, we've got a couple more acts in the last section, and then Silas will be able to get his revenge if he so wants. So, yeah. I'm we'll, so uh, no, I don't want to buy any header, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, go get a drink, go have a smoke, do what you want, and then we'll be back here in about 10 15 minutes. Okay, that's all. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. I should have addressed this earlier when I was talking about lookalikes. Uh, obviously, the obvious one in this profession is Frankie Boyle. Yeah. You know, a guy driving past in a van once shouted, Wanky, Boyle at me. Which is, I thought it was unnecessary, but to be fair, I shouldn't have been wanking in the street. But I love Glasgow, though. It's a brilliant city. We're at tenants, tenants. You know, it's a Glasgow to think. You know, we're a very open and honest city, aren't we? Very much heart on our sleeve, religion on our football shirts kind of vibe, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Someone's pissed grand in the corner. <laughs> no, um, I'd be sure that um, we have that in common in Scotland as a whole, but you know, there's some things that we don't have in common. Like James Bond, he was Scottish, wasn't he? He wasn't Glaswegian. He couldn't be. Imagine, especially if he was from the Catholic side of Glasgow. <laughs> You know, day one in the army, he's asked to swear allegiance to the Queen. That's a James Bond film I want to see, but he defects to the IRA. That's what I want to see. <laughs> right, what am I going to say now? Oh, I'll just talk about the next guy. That's probably the best idea. So, I don't really feel like roasting him because it's kind of like punching a puppy. You know, like. <laughs> well, Mikey, Mikey, he grew his beard so that he didn't look like Kathy Burke. <laughs> Now he just looks like Kathy Burke undercover at a nonce convention. <laughs> Not really sure what they do at nonce conventions. <laughs> I don't want to know, to be honest with you. Um, I forgot anything else to say. Um, yeah, he's got all the polite but nervous energy of a Scooby-Doo villain. You're going to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, The Sausage King! My name is the Sausage King. I'm the most dangerous man in the world. You might have saw me on the telly. Britain's hardest criminals, Britain's toughest prisoners, and antique roadshow. <laughs> This is my friend, Silas. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Silas Shavox translates Son of Dracula <laughs> in the UK. I'm going to read that. I'm also on a, a, a best selling author. Yeah. I'm going to read out a chapter of my autobiology. <laughs> And it's all about how I met this guy. Before we start as well, I'd like to mention that in 1992, I was the world's number one Prince Kid tribute act. 
Og buen. Og buen. Og buen. Det er bare for strengt til en standard comedy. Han vil bare huske nummer en meat and sausage dealer. Vi begynner. Hva er det som gjør om ting av mas? Chapter 37. Transylvania. It was 2006. Wally Allen was number one in the charts. I was deep in the sausage game and did a bit of vampire hunting on the sides for extra cash. <laughs> there was a £15,000 reward if you could find and kill Dracula and his son. In 2006, £15,000 15, was worth about about eighteen thousand pounds. So I sharpened the best steak I could find and cycled to Transylvania on a unicycle. When I got there, it was incredibly hard to find Dracula and his son because they all looked the same. <laughs> They all sounded the same, and they all smelled the same. I definitely had my work cut out, the exclamation mark. I would set up wee booby traps everywhere in Transylvania. Think home alone, but sexy. At this point, I was basically Wesley Snipes in Blade. <laughs> One night I set up a booby trap. I left a baker's dozen of used tampons in a back alley. <laughs> and I hid in a bin. Waiting. Waiting. And waiting. I waited about 20 minutes. And out of nowhere, a bat flew in the alley and shapeshifted into human form and started sucking the blood from the tampons. <laughs> I approached the young vampire as he was hissing at me. I asked his name. He replied, Silas Shabon. <laughs> The son of Dracula. <laughs> I shot him with truth serum, tranquilizer, and he took me back to his lair. <laughs> Luckily enough, his father Dracula was in his coffin watching The Vampire Diary season three. <laughs> So it was easy enough to stake him, as he was so engrossed in the show. After I drove a stake through the heart of Dracula, Silas returned to human form, and we became great friends. <laughs> we really did. He told me he shared a bed with his dad for 18 years, and that he was a virgin. I didn't believe him. So I shot him again with the truth seen about it. And the truth came out. It's a bit too graphic to share with you. But it's dash acting. It was time for me to leave Transylvania and head back to Canvas Lang. <laughs> So I packed my bag 
Go on, man, you're a psycho. <laughs> and cycled back to Scotland with Silas strapped in my back. I got my £15,000 reward money and gave Silas £200 to get him by. In 2006, £200 was worth about, about £400. <laughs> <laughs> that was enough for him to get a fresh start here in Scotland. And honestly, I couldn't be prouder of him as he's been in Scotland for over 10 years. I still can't speak a word of English. <laughs> I just want to say a massive, massive congratulations and happy birthday and present you with these gifts. Thanks for the memories. You're a good boy. Aww. Aww. The first gift is garlic sausage. <laughs> so you can enjoy the sausage and repel vampires at the same time. <laughs> Second gift is just frankfurters, like just, just because they're banging. <laughs> and this gift is my most favourite gift in the whole widest world. Not sausage. It's a picture of me killing his grandfather. <laughs> and I've wrote something for you on the back of it if you want to read it out to everybody, please. Sorry, this. Uh, dear Silas, I killed your grandfather, I killed your father, but I saved you. I want to take this opportunity, uh, okay, opportunity, <laughs> ask, and ask you to be my son, my son, my law. Will you be my son? Let me adopt you. All you need to do is sign here. <laughs> this might not hold up in a court of law, but it definitely okay. does. The <laughs> lawyer's at the door. Thanks, everybody. Happy birthday, sir. <laughs> I was genuinely worried, like, I've no bottom end, what's this guy gonna give him? Turns out it's just fucking sausages. <laughs> By the way, I think Dean will be interested in using them if you don't want them. Just, <laughs> this is gay, that's fucking it. Do you like garlic sausage? Yeah. <laughs> I bet you do, son. <laughs> right, what can I say about the next guy? Yeah, Paddy is, uh, he's 37 now. <laughs> Which means that in his native Black Hill, he can get a bus pass and a pension. <laughs> Locals refer to him as the wise one. <laughs> Which is ironic because the only thing he knows is how to get good quality cocaine on a Monday night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the guy that makes this all possible. The one and only Paddy Lenton! One more time for your host, Peter Bell, everybody! <laughs> like even if he took his glasses off it still looks specky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've had uh, Dean Byrne, you've had it tight tonight, haven't you mate? Yeah. You look like fucking Debbie Harry in a wind tunnel. <laughs> had, oh, we've had Ian Pringle here, the cut on the crutches. Uh, I thought your crutches were fucking booze, cocaine and strangling sex workers. <laughs> Ian looks like an Amish person wearing modern clothes for the first time. <laughs> he, he looks like the answer to the question, what if we introduced heroin into Game of Thrones? <laughs> Fucking 
Jason Momoa, I'm fucking Jason Walesa. <laughs> Uh, Charlie Wallace, uh, you've got a fucking perm, so shut the fuck up, mate. Uh, Kyle Samuel, what a daft cunt he is. <laughs> you look like you survived the abortion. Let's <laughs> call over. <laughs> Talk about his goal, though. It's been done, man. It's, uh, <laughs> Uh, Pierce, fucking Pierce Higgins, woof! Hey, hey, Round of applause for Pierce here! Uh, it's amazing, you spent all that money in acting classes for male tip-top fame. We've still got to see Sean Chalmers, but he's the ginger cunt that's been sitting in the corner all night. Um, Sean's took so many steroids, he's got bigger tits than my mom. <laughs> Sean, Sean tried to hang himself for the road this year. <laughs> I think to eat, he did, and the rope snapped. <laughs> so you know what you need to do, brother? Work in that cardio. They went Mikey there, fucking... That was one of the best mental breakdowns I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> see, see, when Mikey came down, did you think that was your big issue daddy, like, looking like, for the door? <laughs> Uh, we've got, we had fucking Stephen Roche. He's still here, aye, yeah, that's big Stephen. Uh, <laughs> Stephen, you, when you were on stage, two seconds again, that's again. Uh, <laughs> you doing stand up reminds me of uh, Jonathan Ross telling my ma about her hysterectomy. <laughs> <laughs> You've lost the wound. <laughs> We're on to the main event, fucking Silas here. And yes, here we go. I feel like Vladimir Putin, because I'm about to torch Eastern Europe. <laughs> <sighs> Silas is Romain. We've talked about that all night. Um, apparently, 75% of all women trafficked to the UK are from Romania. <laughs> so, thanks for that, mate. <laughs> Uh, when Mikey was talking about uh, tampons there, is it true that you use, use, use tampons as tea bags? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Silas is an actor. Yeah. I know what you're thinking, like, acting's an even tougher gig than stand-up. But hopefully it's just another stage he's going through. That was for me. <laughs> Uh, Silas is a mixed success with his acting, he's had ups and downs. Uh, if you want to catch him this weekend, you can see him at Wagamama's. <laughs> <laughs> also, what is the script of your voice, Silas? You sound like the mentally challenged guy from Police Academy. <laughs> Before we like, uh, Silas is one of the nicest guys in comedy. Like, we all fucking love him. Big round of applause for us, Silas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember last year, like, I was at the fringe, I was flying an all day, and uh, Silas bumped into his, and I, I, I was hungover and dejected. And so I was like, You look like you need some lunch, mate. And he was going to play in a stage performance dressed as a tramp in full costume. And he's like, I'll take you for your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> walked in and he got his a fucking Greg's. He's dressed as a tramp. And I was like, what has my life become? <laughs> well, like a mad Romanian tramp is buying me a Greg's. <laughs> and why have the staff not even thought this looks out of place? <laughs> Mario your time. Happy birthday, Cyrus. I'm happy birthday. <laughs> The staff didn't question that party because to them it just looked like one tramp was buying another tramp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what can I say about the next guy? You better notice him because it's hard to fucking miss him, right? <laughs> he looks like the guy. Basically, what Sean's trying to do is take out what that priest did to him in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he, he said he works out so much because, and I quote, I want consent to not be an option. <laughs> 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 
I'm only joking, he's a lovely man. That's, that's why he wanted to kill himself, because he's too nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's a very good friend of mine. Please welcome to the stage, Sean Chalmers! Hello right, fuckers, how you doing? Woo! Yeah. Give us a, your host tonight, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Lewis has struggled a lot in his life with his autism. So I want you to put your hands together, because he's a great stand-up comic. <laughs> I, feel, I feel anxious, I don't like this. Kyle <laughs> Shannon. Anxious. Kyle Shannon. Yeah. Kyle and his tattoos have a lot of things in common. They're both beautiful to look at. <laughs> That's right, roasted. <laughs> now, but Dean came out to his parents, and I think that is true bravery. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Charlie, I don't know if he's known this, but he taught all around the world to these underprivileged kids. Now, that is true saying. Fuck <laughs> 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 off. for Stephen Roach. Woo woo! Hey. Prince's name right up. Now for Stephen, he works tirelessly at comedy and his relationship. That's why he's married. Great <laughs> <laughs> guy. Great yeah. household. <laughs> Pierce Higgins. I'm not going to say about Pierce. Hey. Pierce is my best friend. Now he's the only man. When I hung myself, he drove miles and spent all of the day comforting me. True friendship. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Pringle. Man, because everybody in here lots and lots of stage time. Now he runs all of these nights with his beautiful girlfriend. Now we love nothing more than a beautiful, supportive woman like his. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey! Yay. Yay. Mikey used to be an ex-drug addict and he has inspired millions of people to get off drugs. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> With Paddy. Paddy suffered a very, very, very bad heart attack. Now I'm just going to come out and say it. I'm glad he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I've heard all my brutal roasts. <laughs> so now, I'm going to roast my man Silas. <laughs> Silas has been in the UK for over 10 years. Now, I could not tell that, right? This guy is bilingual. That's it. <laughs> he travelled all the way on a bus from Romania to here. That's great dedication. <laughs> He was an only child, and he slept in a bunk bed with his dad. Now I only wish to have that great family bond with mine. Well done, Cyrus. He was an actor, a comedian, a podcast host. There truly isn't anything this man can't do. <laughs> Silas claims to have slept with 20 women. <laughs> Now, with that hairline and that great personality and that amazing face, that's a lie, it's well 100. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah, that's right, because what do women love? Loyalty to a religion. <laughs> He's loyal, ladies, that's it. <laughs> now I'm going to hit you with the harshest roast of tonight. Silas, after the day that I had tried to hang myself, phoned me immediately and said, anything you need, I'm there for you, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like you by saying you could be a rapist, and that's what you fucking do. Oh. If you have not seen him before, that is the opposite of the human being. <laughs> fucking hell. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have another wee break, and then Silas is going to take the microphone, if he can stand up. <laughs> 
Because I hear people have been playing with drinks. Yeah! Quince, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. his yeah. fucking birthday! Stop! Don't! <laughs> Get fucking ruined. That's what it's about. <laughs> and now because it'll be funnier watching you try to do stand-up, <laughs> Especially if you fucking can't. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to have another quick break and then Silas will take to the stage! <laughs> Since, since this is technically my century of gigs, I'm going to tell some jokes that I haven't told since my first one. And yes. you'll find out why. <laughs> so one of them was, these are all one-liners by the way, and they are shite, so. <laughs> doctor, doctor, I can't stop reading Scottish poetry. Nurse, take this man to the burns unit. <laughs> When you look at the big picture, I think having a blunt pickaxe is just a minor problem. <laughs> not, not anymore, obviously, because all the mines are shut. That's <laughs> unemployment, that's a minor problem. Something you're familiar with. You know. <laughs> and the last one, uh, I have a friend who works in the margarine industry. He's been ill with long COVID for two years now. I can't believe he's not better. <laughs> that was fucking good. I don't care what you say. Right, we've got a wee, wee treat. We've got a wee surprise because there's another act going to come on. Uh, what can I say about Laura? <laughs> they, won't get, they won't get me cancelled. <laughs> Laura's, Laura's looking for a, a sugar daddy. <laughs> it's true, she, she, she's, looking for a, she's looking for a rich guy, you know, and uh, you're quite small, you could probably pass as an underager, so you know. <laughs> I imagine a Premier League footballer will message you in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please are going to say something. came close. Uh, a lot of people think that um, I'm looking for a sugar daddy. That is kind of true. It's because comedians don't make that much money. Yeah. In my best month in comedy, um, I made uh, a little bit of money enough to cover my rent. In that month, I performed at the stand and then like afterwards this um, middle-aged gay man, he approached me and he was like, hey, I thought you were really funny um, for 200 quid. Would you perform at my birthday party and insult me for 10 minutes? <laughs> I, can't that, I can't believe that I've been insulting my friends for free all these years. <laughs> On that same night, a fat ginger man, um, hey, hey, nice to see you again. <laughs> Messaged me on Instagram and he was like, I thought you were really funny for 200 quid. Would you suck my dick? <laughs> yeah. So as you can imagine, you can probably guess which gig I chose. <laughs> now I have 400 quid. Yeah. <laughs> I only have like two rows for Silas, which I only wrote just now. Silas is a bit of an overachiever. <laughs> he is an actor and a comedian, and recently he tried podcasting because it wasn't enough for him to be bad at two things. <laughs> he had to be bad at three. <laughs> In Silas's fringe show, he, here's a bit of a spoiler, he talks about his, he brags about his sex life. Yeah. Now you would think that if he brags about his sex life, that he would be good at sex. But his last partner reviewed his performance in bed as his funniest performance to date. <laughs> Silas, we've got one yeah. last surprise for you. No, yeah, we do. <laughs> but I'm going to need everyone's help with it. You know, there's a song that usually accompanies someone's birthday. <laughs> and do you know how it goes? I think it goes, Happy birthday to you.
as uh, a unicorn babe. Because Silas is a Romanian comedian, which is as rare as a fucking unicorn. <laughs> Happy birthday, my friend, and now it's your fucking time to shine. Ladies and gentlemen, Silas! I'm too fucking drunk for this. <laughs> yes! I managed. <laughs> if I throw up, it's your fault. <laughs> I do have to admit, being a Romanian Jehovah's Witness, this is the biggest birthday and the best birthday I've had so far. Yeah. 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 Fuck the lot of you. <laughs> Ian Pringle! Yes. <laughs> Mate, crutches are not a substitute for a personality. <laughs> Listen, I get it, we all want benefits. And speaking as a Romanian man, get a fucking job! <laughs> and frankly, I've got to be honest, I'm at the end of my rope with all these Romanian jokes, okay? <laughs> and speaking of the end of my rope... <laughs> so, uh, Sean, recently tried to commit suicide. Uh, contrary to his audience, we are happy that he survived. <laughs> But a lot of people don't know why he didn't succeed is because being an artist and 27 years old he didn't want to be part of the same old trend so he's, <laughs> he's starting a new one 28 and unknown <laughs> Charlie Wallace a hedgehog crossed with a dodgy geography teacher <laughs> I'm not saying he's a pedo, but the only reason he teaches online is because HR made him. <laughs> Peter Bell was once part of the Catholic Church as well as the Jehovah's Witnesses, both religions famous for having a bit of pedophilia. Uh, but he was never touched! Which, if you're waiting for a sign if you're ugly, God has given you two. <laughs> Kyle Samuel yeah. recently has told me in a very personal conversation that he is on antidepressants. Yes. So, Kyle, yeah. stop taking them. <laughs> or, you know, just take all of them. <laughs> <laughs> a guy I had no idea was roasting me. Listen, I I might be a washed up actor, but I'm sorry. Steven Pierce. Basically the boys have kinda told me they've gotten cake. I just this whole time I thought it was gonna be Pierce's ass. <laughs> yes! <laughs> And I will be eating all of that tonight. <laughs> also, for those that don't know, Pierce is one half of a viral TikTok sketch duo, Jamaica Street. And... <laughs> and he has been called one to watch by the Daily Record, Shorto Comedy Awards, and Police Scotland. <laughs> if you're wondering what's wrong with today's youth. Um, <laughs> Paddy Linton! Woo! Now, I'm gonna be honest, be a little confession, being Romanian, I was gonna go through all of your, you know, purses, but... <laughs> <laughs> turns out Paddy Linton has beaten me to it! <laughs> <laughs> because cocaine in Black Hill is not cheap. <laughs> you can give them back now. <laughs> uh, Dean! Oh, T-Bird. He likes to say that he looks like if Jack Black and Kurt Cobain had a kid. But we all know that he looks like if Jack Black ate Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> I 
course, a little side note, he does look like Immortan Joe from Mad Max. <laughs> Just less shagging. Uh, <laughs> Mikey Motion, aka the Sausage King. He is a DJ, a comedian, a comedy promoter, a sausage salesman. This man has more jobs than a Romanian can steal, okay? <laughs> what the fuck? Give me a chance, bro. <laughs> Finally, Laura Quingo. Uh -oh. I don't have any jokes. I can tell you that uh, she is doing a 60% discount on her used underwear on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> That's been my time, thank you so much. <laughs> wonderful night, I hope you've enjoyed it, and um, speaking as a former Jehovah's Witness as well, I know how nice it is to have an actual fucking birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they don't do Christmas either, they're dead fun. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed to rank, which was also a problem for me. Anyway, but, that's us guys, you've been a fantastic audience, we've all been good sports, Silas has obviously been the best sport of the night, get that for him, <laughs> I'm not going to read all the names of the acts out, but get them all a fucking round of applause. Thank you, fantastic. I'll stop you round of applause. Yay! The man who makes his applause for Kyle Robinson. And just so, it's going to be fantastic. Well done, guys. You've been great. So, this one's every Monday. Come see the next one. It won't be like this. People will be nicer. <laughs> No, they won't. But, you know, it won't be aimed at anyone, that's the point. So, yeah, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your night, and uh, the first person to get Silas Blackout wins a prize. I'm going to take him home, then. Not me. It's like you can cycle. <laughs> you are mates, you fucking weirdo. Anyway, I think that's, that's it. I that's can't not it. <laughs>